Hello, welcome to the uh, ninth episode of our uh, cooking series. What we're going to do today is we're going to uh, do one of the dishes that uh, we put on reasonably regularly. We're going to do a, uh, a vegan and gluten-free black pudding, which we've used uh, mostly in Spanish dishes and Brazilian dishes. A dish called fabada or feijoada in Brazil, um, which is a sort of tomato and stew. Uh, with some uh, some black pudding. So um, now this is going to be a cheats version essentially. What I'm going to do is normally I make this in bigger quantities. What I've got here is uh, I've got some uh, some pre lentils and quinoa. And uh, normally what we do, I usually use millet instead of quinoa simply because it's uh, gluten free but a hell of a lot cheaper than quinoa. And it, uh, I think it's got a nicer flavour, it's a little bit nuttier. Quinoa's got a, um, a sort of, well, it's, a, it's an acquired taste, put it that way. Uh, it's quite nice if you toast it off first before you cook it. We've also got some uh, some beluga lentils. Now again, we, you know, these are things that we would cook in uh, in bulk. But because I was doing this today, and it, you know, this is really easy. It's very very simple. These cost one pound ninety nine in Waitrose. Those ones cost 189 in weight draws, and we're probably going to have enough to uh, to make about 10 black puddings. I've also got here. Yeah, I've got some Chinese forbidden black rice, okay, which I, which we've just cooked. I just pop pop a little bit of water on top of it, and then pop it in the microwave for about 30 minutes. And uh, you know, that's just. It's, I mean, really, essentially, you've got the beluga lentils. These, uh, these pui lentils have obviously turned these a little bit browner than they normally be as well. And you've got that, so it's about colour, you know, making black pudding's more about colour. And we've got some simple spices. I've got a little bit of ground mace there. I've got a, a small amount of cayenne pepper in that bag there. We've got some, uh, some ground all spice, and then basically some salt and uh, some ground black pepper. And that's really all we're going to do. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to make it. Now, the way that we make it, the way that I start this, is I usually start with beetroot. Okay, I make a beetroot sort of puree. Now, what I've got today is, um, we've got some beetroot on the menu at the moment. So what I've got is I've got some, some roasted beetroots. Okay, and again, you can use packaged beetroot. Whatever you do, don't use um, beetroot in vinegar because the only thing you taste is vinegar. As you can see, okay, I've roasted is what we've done is we've washed these beetroots um, and then we've wrapped them in foil, we've popped them in the oven uh, at, about, at about 180 for about an hour. Okay, and we, you know, maybe a little bit more than an hour because we usually roast off about you know, 30 at a time. But this is worth doing, and you're going to see why it's worth doing when I start to peel it. The beauty of this thing is that once I start to peel it, you can see the juices come off, you can see how incredibly blood red that is. The beauty of peeling these things is that the, the skin actually just, as long as they're fresh, if, there's got, if they feel soft in any way, don't roast them because you'll never get the skin off. Um, so there you are, that's a, you know, that's peel, that's beautiful. So pop that in my jug, and then I'll do the, uh, I'll do the other three. So again, okay, just washed and uh, wrapped in foil into the oven for one, at 180 for about an hour, and uh, you, and it really is the most delicious. You, can, uh, you can't compare that to boiled beetroots. When I was a uh, a young nipper, my old man had a uh, an allotment, and uh, you know beetroot. I had an allotment myself, and beetroot was one of the things that grows very very well. But when my father used to cook beetroot, he used to bring it home from the allotment and then shove about 15 bulbs into a big saucepan. And it would fill the house with the most incredibly disgusting, noxious gas. Uh, so we always knew to get rid, get out of the house when uh, when the old man was making beetroot. But you know, they boiled it, and as soon as it was boiled, it was uh, it was uh, pretty much smothered in vinegar, and then put into jars, you know, and, and, and preserved. This for me is a much much nicer way of eating beetroot. In fact, it was before my father died. Uh, we gave him some roasted beetroot to try, and uh, whilst he never liked to admit he was wrong, uh, he did, you know, he did remark on just, you know, the sweetness is one thing. It's a much, much sweeter thing. Um, now, 
I'm going to break off for just a second now and uh, clean my hands and get rid of that. So, uh, Lee, I'll be back in a couple of seconds. Okay, so what we've done now is I've just added a little bit of water. Okay, you can see the four beetroot there. And you can look, if you look at that, the way that the water is already discoloured, it's got incredibly purple. This beetroot here, of course, is the beetroot that turns everything purple when you go to the toilet, okay? So if you, if you do roast beetroots, and you're not, and you're used to eating boiled beetroots, okay? And you go to the toilet, you probably haven't got liver cancer, okay? I, the first time, the fir I, I played golf one day, and I'd eaten beetroots, I'd eaten roasted beetroot, and I came off the golf course, and uh, you know, I won't go into too much detail, but you know, I came out at the time thinking, Christ, I've got liver cancer. Um, you know, that's not good. And thankfully, by the time I got to the uh, to the uh, the bar, I, I, I sort of made the uh, I'd made the uh, leap of uh, intuition that I'd actually been eating uh, roasted beetroots. It will turn your urine purple. Okay, so. Don't laugh, Leanne, okay? It will turn you in purple. Don't, don't, but don't worry about it, you probably don't have liver cancer. Um, right, so what I'm going to do with these now, that's my, essentially that's my stock there, okay? What I'm going to do with that, leave you just carry on looking at the ingredients then. I'll just go and get a, a blender. Bang about with the bits. Okay, now I've got a, a nice hand blender here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend up that beetroot. Uh, with the water, and this is going to essentially be my sort of stocky wet ingredient. And do you know what? I can even add a tiny bit more water to that. That's gone quite thick. Quite thick. Whoops! There goes the. Uh, oh dear! What have I dropped there? Oh, that was the uh, that was the base for the kettle. Never mind. We'll uh, we'll pick that up again in a second. Okay. So there we go. I'll try not to cover the in purple juice. That is uh, the beetroot puree there. Okay, it's absolutely delicious. Um, and that's what we use as our sort of liquid ingredient in this. So I'll just take the. Uh, I'll take the blender. Over to wash. Right, and then it's simply an assembly job, okay? Now, the first thing we got is a bowl. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to open my packets. So, first thing first, in with my lentils and quinoa. In with my beluga lentils. And then, lastly, this is probably too much, so I'm not going to use all of this. Um, the last thing I'm going to do, to say on the ingredients please, uh, is I'm just going to grab a spoon. I'm probably only going to put uh, half of that. Uh, maybe I'll eat the rest of it or maybe chuck it in the bin. Right, so that's that. And there's our dry ingredients. Now then, of course the dry ingredients are not um, seasoned, so what we'll do is we'll add a little bit of salt. Okay, you can be reasonably generous with this. Maybe a little bit more. A little bit more salt. Okay, and we got some ground pepper. And again, I quite like these. These I like these quite peppery. So we'll add a good couple of pinches of pepper. Okay, and then the spices. So now I've got the cayenne pepper. You know, it all depends if you want that sort of that sort of heat on on, on, the, on the tongue. I kind of like it. So we'll add you know a nice little sprinkle of uh, cayenne pepper. That should be plenty. And then I've got some ground mace here, which we'll add just a little of. Now, when I make these, I tend to put too many cloves in there. So instead of putting cloves in, what I've got is I've got ground allspice berries, okay? This, you know, is allspice, but it gives you a hint of nutmeg cloves, a hint of, of cinnamon. So it gives you all the kind of things. Absolutely delicious. And it really does smell quite clovey. So we put in about a teaspoon of ground allspice, like so, and then give that a quick stir. Right, and the last thing we're going to do is we're going to add our beetroot puree. So in goes the beetroot puree. 
I'll bring this over there a little so you can see it. And, you know, this is, uh, you can see how dark this has made it go already, okay? So we've got the beetroot puree in there now, and we've got our mix of lentils and quinoa, and, and rice. Okay, all of that is just for colour, right? Essentially, I don't know, I don't know, you know, how blood coagulates, but um, essentially what we're trying to do is we're just trying to get the same kind of texture that you get in a, uh, a black pudding, obviously, without the need to kill any pigs. Um, and of course, you know, one of the big things is the, uh, the spice mix you put in. If you get the spice mix right, then this really doesn't do a, ver a bad job of, um, you know, uh, getting the flavour of the black pudding. And it's really good in any of those dishes. Right, that's that. Now so then, we need two other things. Now this obviously is just a sloppy mush at the moment. So what we need to do is we need to make that set up, okay? Well, obviously when it's bloody, if you cook it slowly enough, it coagulates and that's what, uh, you know, with a little bit of rusk and stuff like that, you know, that's how you make a black pudding. The nothing in there is going to coagulate, so what we have to do is we need two other ingredients. So yeah, if you just concentrate on the bowl for a second, I'll grab the other ingredients. So, we have two things that we have. Oops, there goes the... Uh, We have two more ingredients. Now, this first ingredient is one of the most important ingredients. It's agar agar, okay, which is a seaweed uh, derivative, and it's a gelling agent. Now, I've got there, I guess, getting on for about a liter and a half that I want to set. Now, what I'm going to do here, I've got agar agar powder. You can see it's in powdered form. Um, if you can't get agar agar powder, then probably use veggie gel instead. And for every teaspoon of agar agar powder I put in, you're probably looking at about a sachet of veggie but gel. So, I'm gonna put three te teaspoons of agar agar powder in there. So that's gonna be my first gelling agent. And then what I've got in this bag here is I've got potato starch. Okay, so potato starch, I use potato starch again to, to, just to encourage the set, okay, and for texture. So what we're going to do is we're going to add about 50 grams, maybe about 50 grams, maybe not 50 grams here actually, maybe near uh, 40 grams, but it could have been 50 grams. We could have weighed that really, but there we are. Nobody's eating this except for us, so uh, that's fine. So what I'll do now is I'm just going to mix this through, okay? So we'll mix that up well, and you can see that it's already started the colour's got a little pinker, obviously, as the addition of white will make it a little pinker. And you can see that it's not quite as sloppy. It's holding on a spoon. I'm just going to add another 10 or 15 grams of this potato flour. There you go, and pop that over there. And, right, that there now is our base mix for our black puddings, or the black puddings that we use in the restaurant. Now, if you cut there, please leave, we'll be back in a second. Okay, and welcome back. Right, so what we've got, I've got here, I've got a bit of cling film, okay? This is the, uh, this is the reason for putting these videos up, okay? Because oh, everything up until now has just been ridiculously simple, okay? But this is where, you know, you can get a bit lost. Uh, we've got this recipe, it's been up online for a while, I don't know if anyone's ever made it. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a sheet of cling film. So long. That's about 15, 16 inches long, probably. And this is the key to making black pudding, right? We've got all our setting agents in there. We've got potato starch and we've got agar agar in there, right? So that's going to set. Now, in order for these things to work, we've got to cook them. Now, we could, if we wanted to, pop that into the microwave or you could pop it onto the heat. Okay, and you can start to get the agar agar working. Now, what I found, and this is the way I make all my vegan cheeses as well, is what I found is it's much, much easier, much, much nicer if we just take a bit of the mix, maybe 10 uh, sausages is a little bit over the top, okay? But I take a little bit of the mix and I pop it into the middle of my, say, 16 inches 
of cling film. Now what I'm going to do then is I'm just going to turn it over like that. Then I'm going to turn it backwards and then I'm going to do the same again. And then I'm going to do the same again. And this is um, this is going to give just reasonably boring, but not that boring. Okay, that's it. Right, you can see I've almost got a sausage shape. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take that over and I'm going to seal it. Then I'm going to turn the rest of my mix into the cling film, thus creating a sausage. Now look at that, beautiful, great sausage so far. It doesn't look much like a uh, black pudding, but if I carry on rolling that, okay, these stainless steel worktops are not brilliant for this because they, they they tend to be a little bit too slidey. But if you look at that now, that looks much more like a black pudding. All right, so we've made a little sausage, okay? Now I've made boudon blancs out of tofu in exactly the same way. What you do is you take your one end first, you tie it off, okay? So just simple knot, tie it off, and make sure that you push it right down to the end, okay? And then tighten it all up again, and tie off this end. And that is indeed perfect. Not a perfect crime yet. Anyway, it would be a perfect crime if it uh, splits when we're making it. Okay, but that's essentially how, you know, I make all my vegan cheeses exactly the same way. I make the, the, uh, the haggis in exactly the same way. Okay, we add all of the setting ingredients to our raw mix and then we poach them. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the rest, I'm going to do the rest of this mix and then we're going to poach it off. So I'll say goodbye for a moment and then we'll be back when all the other sausages are ready to be poached. Okay, uh, right, so we're back. I finished uh, rolling all that up. You can see if the looks down here at the, uh, at the thing. I've made, um, I think that was the first one we made. Okay, I've made another four. I made that one because it, uh, it was a bit bigger. But it was, it was getting on my nerves by that time. That one obviously is a little bit shorter and fatter, okay? And it doesn't really matter what they look like, right? But you can see they're quite purple at the moment. So all we got to do now is we've got some water boiling over here. So if Leanne just follows me with the camera, uh, you don't have to come down, Lee. Uh, i got some, some water just, just on a gentle simmer there, okay? All that we do now, you know, we've, we, this is completely watertight. I used to double wrap these. Right? To be extra careful, but it's a pain in the, it's a pain in your ass, to be brutally frank. Double wrapping. I mean getting the bloody double wrapping off is even worse, right? So right, let's knock that down, a little gentle simmer. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna chuck all of our uh, uh, sausages in. So Lee, if you want if you wanna jump down and actually come across here, then uh, you'll see right with the pop in and like I said, I make vegan cheese in exactly the same way, right? Don't use any microwaves. Or, or, or boiling it on the hob. You may see some instructions that tell you to boil it on the hob. It's a real pain in the neck. Right, so we have all of our black puddings in there. Gentle simmer. I'm going to put the lid on. And you can say goodbye to those for about 25 minutes, okay? 25 minutes, what's going to happen is that all of that agar agar that's in there is going to start to actually react, it's going to start to melt. Okay, and then when we take that out, the starch from the potato starch is going to start to set as well. So when we take that out of there, it's going to start to set. Now, once that's done in 25 minutes, we'll come back in 25 minutes, they need to go in the fridge. Okay, they'll need to go in the fridge for a day or something like that. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll go off and have a cup of tea and uh, come back and take a look at those in 25 minutes. Hi, right, okay, so these have been cooking over a half an hour, okay? What we're gonna do is we're just gonna open it up and we're gonna show you what it looks like, right? So as you can see, if you look inside now, okay? You can see that, you know, the, uh, the air started to obviously expand in there. But if I just press that, okay, it's kind of firm to the touch. It's still got a little bit of give in it, but it's kind of firm to the touch. Now what we need to do with that is we need to get these cooled down quickly and get them in the fridge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these off the heat, knock the heat off, and I'm just going to take these and I'm going to put them under the cold water tap and I'm going to run cold water over. And we're just going to let the cold water run over them until uh, 
until there's only cold water in there and then I'm just going to let them cool down in the water um, just get that out get rid of the water there we are put that back in one escape so you can see look that is set up right that's not that's not flabby anymore that's actually firm to the touch okay so that's set up but that needs to cool down so what we're going to do is we're going to put that now to one side we're going to let that cool down i'm going to try not to burn my hand okay and that's the uh that's how we make our haggis that goes into the fridge now well, in about 20 minutes we'll put that into the fridge and let it set up and then that'll be great okay so uh, come back and we'll fry a little bit off okay so two days have passed maybe they haven't this is a rare uh, this is one of the haggis um, it's been in the fridge set up you can see now it's actually reasonably hard actually Leanne's laughing I'm lying this is one we made earlier okay but it's exactly the same technique so there it is. It's nice and solid. Right, all we've got to do is I'll get a chopping board and we'll take a little, take a knife, cut off the, uh, cut it out of the skin, the cling film skin, and there it is your, oh, I said haggis again. Sorry, I've said haggis about three times. So this is at the black pudding of course, right? So what we do for service now is we'll take that, okay, we won't use that one because it's got a round edge on it. So we'll take a couple of pieces and we'll cut them, okay? And there we are, just knock off that bit of rice there. Always a little bit of rice comes out. You can see, if you look in there, okay, if you look closely you can see, you can see the, um, the little quinoa, the little white bits. You can see the lentils, you can see a little black bit there, a little black bit there. That's the rice. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pop these into a pan. Leanne, if, um, we'll, we'll take a break in a second. We're going to pop these into a pan. I'm going to get a pan on and we're just going to fry these off and we're going to have a taste. Okay, so if you come back in a couple of seconds, then the pan should be ready. So we've got, a, we've got a pan of oil there, a pan of vegetable oil. Okay, I'm just going to grab a couple of three bits of um, the, uh, the black pudding or the veggie black pudding. We're going to pop them in. Okay, try not to burn your hands because it bloody hurts if you do burn your hands. Right, oh wow, man, that's got me in the eye. Ah! No, I'm joking, no, I'm joking, sorry, that didn't get me in the eye at all, okay. Um, so we've got the black pudding in there. What we're going to do is we're just going to fry them on both sides until they're nice and dark. Leanne, if you can stick with that, I'll, uh, I'll just grab something to turn them over with. I've got a, uh, you know, a little spatula here. All right, so we'll have a little look now. And what you're going to notice first, right, is that the colour has changed completely. It's going to go from that sort of purpley colour, and it's going to go darker. Now, as we leave these, that colour is going to get darker again. Okay, so as we actually cook them and then we leave them, that's going to go much blacker, much more like a black pudding. Right, okay. So, we'll let those... Just simmer away there for a couple of seconds. As I said, the dishes that we have tended to use these for is a Spanish dish called fabada and a uh, and a Brazilian dish called feijoada. We also did a posh beans on toast, where we took some white beans, made a nice smoky uh, tomato sauce with some Spanish paprika, and then popped this in there, and we served that on a bit of. Um, on a bit of ch toasted ciabatta, I think that was one of the first. I think that was our first St. David's Day menu. We did posh beans on toast, which is far pole something or other. I can't remember what posh is in Welsh. Someone can someone can email in and tell us. Okay, so essentially, that is quite possibly done. So what I'm going to do is going to pop that up there now. Leanne's going to continue looking at that. I'm going to grab a plate. I'm going to grab a plate, so I'm going to grab a fork. I'm going to get a fork. Right, so, I mean, that must be a lovely shot there of these veggie black puddings. Vegan, actually vegan and gluten free. So what we'll do is we'll take those out. Now, normally I'd put that onto a bit of, um, onto a bit of, what's it called? Sort of absorbent paper. Um, but we haven't got any, so. I'll just take it off and we'll put those three onto the plate. 
Now then. Some tomato ketchup would be nice, but we don't actually do anything like tomato ketchup here anymore, so we haven't got any. So I'm afraid that this is now, I'll just taste these for you, so without any accompaniment. Now then, the first thing to notice is that when I break it open, if you just look at the texture of it, okay, texturally, it's kind of like a black pudding. Now you can see that a little bit of that's held together, that's the agar, that's the agar agar. I'm going to taste this. Well, I must say, that is absolutely delicious. Normally, I put too many cloves in there. I'm quite heavy on the cloves, but this one, like I said, with these ones we made today, uh, we put allspice in instead. This has got a lovely kick of uh, cayenne. Absolutely beautiful. And you really couldn't. Well, I've never eaten black pudding, right? I've never had a black pudding in my life, so I wouldn't have a clue what it tastes like. But that, to me, tastes absolutely delicious. It's quite sausagey, and uh, goes brilliantly in any of those dishes. Now, I'm trying not to spit as I'm saying this. That is Canteen on Clifton Street, vegan, gluten free black pudding. Okay, give it a go. Use the stuff we've done today, and it takes seconds. You don't necessarily need the black rice, right? You could get rid. You could leave the black rice out of there. It'd still be a fantastic, a fantastic dish. So give it a go. Um, you know, it's fun, it's fun for the kids. Fun for the kids, anyway. All right. We'll see you next time. Cheers.